Well, welcome to a, yeah, first kind of YouTube-only series I'm doing. Uh, this is Hand of Fate. Uh, I don't, I don't want to subscribe to a mailing list. No, thank you. Um, Hand of Fate, which is uh, a simple card game dungeon crawler thingy. Uh, can I skip this? No. Okay, so basically the premise of this game is that we have a deck of cards uh, that we put together ourselves, which consists of encounters, equipment, and um, those cards. We use them to beat our own deck, basically. So we are then playing against our own deck, basically. So it can make it harder on us, it can make it easier on us. Um, but in the end, the goal is to defeat the one boss monster that our one enemy, one. or kind Let's of enemy, the uh, fate caller over there gives us. Here is the first member of my uh, this is the Jack of Dust. The jack of dust. Twelve um, in all must fall before you may challenge me. So this tutorial basically challenges us to kill the Jack of Dust at the end of the uh, yeah of the uh, of the dungeon Let the cards fall where they may. so we can now move along these cards we start here on the stairs we can move along and see where all of this takes us Miss Lionel here I'll make an exception. whilst enjoying your evening meal at the local tavern the strange old man takes the seat next to yours he taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention, and you notice that he appears to be a goblin, poorly disguised as a human. He wizened his, his wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you give me what I need, boy, I will conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. So, um, we can ask him what he needs, we can give him bread from a plate or give him 20 gold, but we only have 10 as you can see in the lower left corner. So just give him the bread from our plate. He considers the bread seriously before placing it carefully in his coat pocket, seemingly satisfied. Mr. Lionel taps the staff on the ground and a shield materializes at your feet. There you go, old bean. He smiles a warm grin that reveals all his chipped and yellow teeth. Your face reminds me of my son. I haven't met you before, have I? Draw one equipment card. So I know we draw equipment card until we have a shield, which was like the first one, which gives us the ability to uh, counter and reflect. You can now reflect your opponent's ranged attacks using your shield. Make good use of this skill if you wish to survive. And before you can stop him with inhuman spate, he snatches a pickled onion off your plate and sprints out the tavern door. Which places us back down, and we can now uh, select another card. It gives us the Twisted Canyon. That glinting weapon, the call for action to adventure. Hmm. There is nothing like it. You see a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. Can the walls of the canyon are covered in thick vines, perfect for climbing. I can choose to climb down to retrieve the weapon or just leave it. However, I want to climb down the ladder. I uh, climb down the vines. Now we have three success on the f and one failure Give card. So we now choose one card. And we have a success. Well, very carefully, you make your way to the bottom of the canyon. Retrieve the weapon from the ancient corpse. Draw one equipment card, which gives us an axe with 25 damage, which is better a than the one we have equipped right now. That will make you much more effective. We carry on here. And the maiden. One day in a shady forest you encounter an elf maiden. She stops to greet you. I am Merith of the Forest Folk. My people have long helped the mortals of this realm. What boon would you ask of me? Ask for a life, last, ask for supplies, ask for gold. So basically, ask for gold gives us gold, ask for supplies gives us supplies, and ask for longer life. Um, pr presumably hell, I have never done longer life, so I'll go for that. I draw two max health gain cards, which is five. A little extra health. Another five, so we get ten max health ups, which is okay, which is pretty good, which is pretty good indeed. The creators of magical artifacts were forged long ago and have only limited uses before the power is spent. Use them wisely and then we guide you to victory. Farewell, mortal. And then we have the stairs, which are our way on. So we take the stairs. This gives us the next set of cards. 
A deadman's gorge. While crossing the ancient road, bridges of the deadman's gorge. You hear sounds of movement from below. It's an ambush. Draw one monster card. Just a two of dust. So this is a fight against two monsters of the dust type. Get all of our equipment here. And we can start the fight. So basically, this is what we can do. We can move with the left stick, we can attack with the X button, do dodgeball with the A, stun with B, and a counter with a Y button. So this is basically what we do now. We attack and counter. So this is basically the whole fighting system we have in this game. This is all there is to it. You cover what you can from the dead. The dealer draws you three game cards. Have armor you draw one equipment, which gives us the Mowgli's. During combat, press right bumper to throw knives on eight cardinal directions. Artifacts provide powerful special we got three food combat, it takes time to and work. 20 gold, which brings us up to 30 gold. A winding trail. An ambush. Hardly fair, is it? Suddenly, a tree falls across your path, blocking the right ahead. The dealer draws you one monster card, which is another two of dust. Weapons bristle from the trees around you, their wheelless faces obscured by the undergrowth. Give us all your gold or die. Attack the cowardly band for daring to threaten you, give them all your gold. We attack the cowardly band, obviously, because I don't, I'm, I'm not going to give them gold. And like I said, this is all to the, to the battle system, this is pretty easy. So I don't mind fighting two enemies here. So now I have right bumpers artifact. I can just do this now. So yeah, that's that. This artifact makes stuff a little bit easier. On this. You search the bodies for loot, the dealer draws you three game cards. So you get another equipment, which is the explorer's helmet. Small H for navigation, but still. Three more food. And 50 gold. The next card is the Travelling Mage. So this is a shop uh, in the shady grove of the beaten trail. You find a travelling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Mages sell only specific items that they've discovered in faraway lands. Their prices can be high, but they also pay well for anything that catches their interest. Let's approach the shop, see what the shop has to offer. If you were wondering why you've been collecting all that gold, you now have your answer. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and forth between resources and rewards. So now we can buy stuff. This uh, Hernes Antlers. Lizardmen take double damage from the place. Like, however, we don't have Lizardmen right now, so it doesn't matter to us. Uh, Haggis Wraps. Each strike inflicts a curse. They're going to weakening opponent, which is pretty okay. Dragon ring when all dragon relics are equipped. They are multiple, so only one does bring us anything. When you draw supplies, set, instead draw two and pick one. However, I'm going to go with the hacks wraps for now. Buy them. It's not enough that you kill them; you'll curse them too. See if we can sell something because I don't think I want the explorer salad. This is not worth much here. Just leave. Inventory. So here we have our inventory. We have blessings and curses, which we don't have right now. We have light armor. We have an axe that deals 25 damage. We have the hacks wraps with the curse. Demo as an artifact. The shield uh, and the helm. And there's the trinket. Here is all you have gained. Upgrade them here. I've never seen upgrades yet, so I've got the Jack of Dust. This bandit, my first champion, 
Okay. A good man driven to madness by a war that took all from him. Wife and child, kith and kin. In such dark and brittle iron I forge my steel. Now we see your metal. Of the bandit leader stronger and faster than most bandits encountered. He can become enraged, making powerful and unblockable attacks. He also inspires his followers to steal gold on each hit. In the ruins of an ancient temple among the eternally shifting sand dunes lives the mysterious leader of the desert bandits, infamous for his reign of terror over any spice caravans that dare take the chances travelling through his domain. He rules as a king over the barren land. So let's see. This token will unlock more cards if you defeat this encounter. So this is a card token, or three card tokens rather, at he. Um That he offers us. So if we beat this card we get three card tokens. Which in turn give us um more cards to unlock. And to put in our deck. So this is the Jack of Dust. This is all of our stuff. Go right ahead into the pack of the fourth dust. So I'm going to kill those first. Nope. Fuck that. Nope. I'm bad. Uh, yeah, A is the roll, not B. Roll away, wait for him to attack. Use the mode, please. And dead. Now I killed the Jack of Dust. Down into the worms again. And he goes into our collection. One champion has been sent to the cavern. Yet we are only at the start of our road. You will face eleven more opponents who will test your strength, your memories, and your resolve. Few fall at the first hurdle. None reach the last. We have wagered, and you have won. You may claim your reward, yet I will also claim mine. As you improve, so do I. So now we can open our card tokens here. Gives us more cards. Jack of Skulls as the next enemy to defeat. Uh, Dead King's Hall. Local Peasant. Devil's Choice. A River. And Captain of the Guards as another enemy to defeat. Now we have another token. Which gives us equipment. Medium Armor. Chains of Rage. Mercenary Contract. Medium Armor. Fortitude's Breath and Desperate Measures. And our last card token gives us one more bandit attack as a new challenge. Shall we deal again? So ah, we good. shuffle now our cards. The basics, we can begin in earnest. Move on to story your mode. Hero is returning to the Killing Island. Our decks are reset. Welcome to the cabinet, home of the members of my court. So here we select our next enemy. You to face my undead the army. Jack of Skulls. No. Jack of Skulls. Uh, we can actually evaluate, do a uh, build a deck. So right now in our deck we have two axes, which are 25 damage each. We start by the way with the uh, 23, uh, tw 20 axe, 20, 2 20 damage swords. We have three shields. Two helmets and the Damocles. I'm I'm gonna keep the Damocles. I don't want three. Sh like the thing is, I'm going to take the um, the one card that gives us a shield. So I'm just taking in uh, one shield, and that is Fortitude's Breath over here. I want to take that. We don't know what it does yet, but it is a shield. So it does the same thing as a normal shield. Considering we're going to to flip through the deck to get it. I'm taking it. Also I'm going to remove the axes. Put in another sword. Uh, no, not the sword, sorry. We remove the swords, put in the axes. 
as well as the desperate measures. And we have armor here. I'm going to put in chains of rage and medium armor. Um, might as well put one sword back in, and I'm taking the mercenary contract. So that is our deck of 12 cards for equipment. Now we have the encounters. Um, so we have Twisted Canyon, the Maiden, those, those are locked. Until we defeat the King of Dust. So we can't remove these. He's locked in there. Um, so the only things we can remove is are the Winding Trail, uh, the Ambush and the Deathman's Gorge. Um, on we have three uh, left, so I'm taking Devil's Choice, I'm taking the Dead King's Hall, and I'm taking the Local Peasant. And we can put in a Fate. So right now we're Adventurer. Uh, we could go for the Apprentice, which um, would give us some... Um, we might make us stronger, the enemies would be weaker. Um, and put in more... Um, Yeah, put, put in more um, deck chain. If we got Apprentice 1 in there, we got the two of dust. Held elixirs and so on. So we would get that stuff in there. But I don't want to take that. Uh, um, the, the other thing as we have is the Warlord, which makes us which makes the combat faster, enemy stronger. Um are stronger, the uh, counter decks get stronger, and the bandits would have throwing weapons. Um and also we'd have like um, cards on there and make it harder. So it's a hard mode basically. We have easy default and hard. And then later on uh, we can actually like uh, get more cards here. However for now I'm staying with a default adventurer mode. So this is the deck we'll take. Start the game. When you complete your run. So he also puts cards in there. The How boring life would be without any of those cards. And we start with a new dungeon. Prepare yourself. What do you have here? Captain of the Guards. There's a token in it for you if you win. You hear a shout from up ahead and the sounds of battle. Racing forwards, you discover warriors surrounded by undead. Two of skulls. Strange, he calls it as he throws his weapon to it. Here, take my mace and put an end to these monstrosities. So we get a mace here, which does more damage. Which we are uh, absolutely going to equip. I have a two of skulls here. And we have a better weapon, which does holy damage. So let's go. We don't have a shield yet, which we need to keep in mind. So we can't counter attack yet. So we need to actually dodge. Well, that was pretty easy. Good work putting them to rest. Keep the mace, we have enough back at Kader, he says, slowly standing. We've been hearing reports of undead in our king recently came to investigate. He stops to look around at all the bone fragments. More of them here than I suspected. Some new horror must have decided to settle on these parts and brought its minions. I must head back to the capital and report this to the Duke. Watch your step, friend. There's something more powerful at work than just these skeletons. The card's token is now token yours. Is yours. Well done. So we keep the token. And choose the next card, which is going to be this one. Twisted Canyon again, we already know this card. That initial moment where things begin. I have worked in these parts all my days. And the canyon has been there from the outset. So we already know what to do here. We are absolutely going to climb down to retrieve the weapon. Uh, we have one failure to three successes. I'm taking the second card right now. Which is success. See what we we'll get. One equipment card. We we'll get an axe, 25 damage, which I'm not going to take here. I'm not Ooh. equipping that. Is that what you're going to do? Yes, that is what I'm going to do. Um, so we have that in our inventory now. So um, we want to. We can um, 
sell it, basically. We've got the Fair maiden enough. here. So, again, we are, I'm asking for gold this time around. It is unlike an adventure to beg for a coin, but very well, if that is your wish. Three gold gain cards. We get 30 gold, another three gold, and another 25 gold. So we're at 68 gold now, which will actually allow us to buy some stuff. Head downwards. And take the stairs to the next level. Many have reached this far. Further. I do not know if you have what it takes to do better than they did. Traveling uh, Tinker. In the shady grave of the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Tinker sell items of all descriptions. And considering it have 68 gold, I'm going to approach the shop. I want to see what he sells, if there's something in there in his shop that we actually might be able to uh, take advantage of. Um, I am going to sell the axe that we don't need anymore because we have the mace which we're using and then look at the items. We have the mercenary contract, we have that in our deck. The Mowgli's Explorer's Helmet and a Burr Sword. Um, we have 72, right? So I'm going to take we have both of these in our deck. Maybe let's just take the explorer's helmet for now. An item and that leave tells the rest. You how to move quickly, but tempts you to take your time. So basically, what this uh, explorer's helmet does, um, it tells us where the stairs are. Well, it doesn't tell us now because there are no stairs here. Um, and it gives a gold, extra gold when we clear everything. Mr. Lionel. To wonder if you're simply leaving this card in as a quick way to get your hands on the key. That's exactly what I'm doing. I might actually give him 20 gold this time. Okay, you just got the same stuff. Okay. I have never given him 20 gold before. You get a fortitude's breath here. Uh, every third encounter does not consume food. Press B button to shield bash a target. Okay. The ambush encounter, we already what know that as well. Would with a card oh, the two of dust, that's not too bad. Eh? Two of dust is not a bad card for us, to be fair. And now we can counter and reflect again. Go. That's the encounter. Ambush. Uh, we're searching the area for anything with some real estate. One of your parents is only pretending to be dead. Of, of course, we sneak up and kill them. See if we can find a success here, which gives us a quick weapon blade to the head fixes that you finish searching the area. Three gain cards. We get one equipment from our armory. Just desperate measures, which I'm absolutely going to equip here. Of weapons, because nobody ever anticipates being in peril. Thus we have three food and another three food. We keep going on for Devil's Choice. So the last time I had this card, I'll uh, explain after I see this. Win this and claim my token. The cloaked devil appears in your path. I'm here to test your might, so called hero. Choose your foe. So we have three foes now. And the last one is I picked one of the twos and actually gave me the other two cards. So I'm taking the four now. Yeah. Mm, since this is whom you wish to find, I think today I shall make you find the others instead, just for fun. So basically, I'm just going instead of six enemies that it would have, I'm just taking four now. Which makes the fight a little bit easier. Not that it would matter that much, but considering I can actually counter and block. So this is pretty simple actually. Yeah, there we go. 
go. It's not a hard fight by any means. Even six uh, enemies would have been too bad. I just wanted to see if it works the same way as I've had seen it work, because I only had it once before. Excellent, the devil cries. You have passed my cunning test. Have some treasure. Perhaps next time I pass cross, I will kill you myself. The dealer draws you three gain cards. This card's token is now yours. You gain five food. One of my cards. Get another it's equipment. Oh, I'm not going to I take the axe. So for long. And we get five max health. And then we have another stairs. Towards our foe. Good. Now all you need to do is find and kill the Zap Skull. That meant Scorch, we already know that one as well. Monster card. Three of dust isn't too bad. That's actually okay. Pretty easy, except the, the like for now. I don't know how it is late in the game, but for now, this this is pretty easy. I could probably go in the high levels, but you, know, you cover what you can from the dead. Dealer you draws you three gain cards, which gives us another. I think it gives us a medium armor now, which I would absolutely uh, equip there. Five supplies and another three supplies. The best armor. So much more. A winding trail, which oh, gives us another encounter. Two of dust. Sure, we're going to fight those. I, I don't care about two of dust. It's, it's nothing bad, really. Nothing bad, really. Can easily clear that. Gives another three gain cards. So now we draw three and select one to keep an eye. Oh, I want Dharma Clays, but I want to know what the change of age are. An excellent way to turn an injury into an asset. That's another medium. No, I'm not going to take that. Taking the moat, please. Yeah. Five food. Another three food. So much food that I don't need. Like every step consumes one food. And every third we have doesn't consume a food right now. A group of bandits suddenly attacks. The king of dust isn't happy about you killing his men. The dealer draws you one monster card. Two of dust. This is ridiculous. Like, the thing is, it can be pretty easy. Um, if you're lucky with your with your card draws, which I am right now, because I only get like twos. And Bob, last one. I could have used Tomokis there, probably killed them instantly, but where's the fun in that? Among the buddies, you find a scrap of parchment with a rough description of you, plus an offer of a reward from the King of Dust. The dealer deals you one gain card. Gives another 15 gold, which is okay, I guess. I have a shop here. On the shady grove of the beaten trail, general shops offer a range of items and healing, but the price is a little higher than usual. Let's approach the shop we have. Like I think we have something to just sell. And we also have 67 gold, so I want to see what we can get, I think, for the last fight we have now. Um, so, sell items. Oh, we have an axe that we don't need. For three. We have another maze that we don't need. And... Yeah, the rest is equipped, right? Yeah, the rest is equipped. Let's see what we have. For 73 gold, we can get the most new contract healing cap. So, that's all shit. Could buy food, but there's no point in buying food really. So let's keep moving on. 
to the Jack of Scalds. The undead. Of all the players in the game, these are the most dangerous in the world, yet in no natural form. A wrongness, an error. This tenacious undead is unusually difficult to lay to rest. In addition to sheer strength, the skeleton has the power to revive recently defeated skeletons in its close vicinity. Serving as captains to squads of lesser skeletons, these unholy abominations strike fear into the hearts of all warm-blooded folk. For until this fiend is defeated, their legions are effectively endless. So yeah, we're going against the Jack of Scalds now. We'll get two card tokens for this. And with him, we get four skulls. So basically what we need to do here, like the uh, description said basically, um, we need to kill him first. Now we're done. Which finishes off this adventure. Ah, well done. Well done indeed. But you have roused the dead into dusty truths, and even I cannot say what will come of it. So now I got a lot now small of tokens. More interesting. Murder of CDLC. With a landlocked lover card, we have White Minotaur DLC. We have the uh, White Council DLC. We have the Goblin King's Hordes DLC. We have the Underworld DLC. We have card tokens. For helping the captain, we get a mace and another mace. Or deck. And we have the Devil's Choice, Devil's Wager in our deck. And for Skeleton Jack, we have the Crucible, we have Queen of Dust, which is locked to the deck, with the Helpful Priest, and we have the Desert Storm. And we also get, as equipment, we get the Helm of Reflection, Consuming Shame, Angel's Wing, and Frost Fang all those new cards and we will look into this the next time so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time with Hand of Fate when we look at uh, the Queen of Dust until then see you